first thing we do before we can start is make sure that our iron is really hot. The hot glass will not stick to cold metal. So already, the end of my iron is very warm, and that's where the expression, you've got the wrong end of the stick comes from. Which end would you rather hold? Okay, so that would come from passing an iron, someone grabs it, or you've got the wrong end of the stick. Okay? So next thing we're going to do is actually gather out the glass. So it's known as gathering. So what we do is we dip the iron into the glass and we start turning. The more you turn, the more glass you end up with. And that's known as a gather of glass, but also known as a gulp of glass. G O B, a gulp of glass. So what I'm going to do now, walk over to the cutter. I'm just going to roll the glass in these coloured chips. Because these chips of glass are so small, they heat up straight away and they stick. So again, hot glass will stick to hot glass. If these chunks were much bigger, I'd have to preheat them, otherwise they would crack when they stuck to the hot glass. And next I have to keep turning. If you stop turning, it's going to fall on the floor. Using the heat from the furnace now, we melt those colours in so we have one piece of glass. Okay? Everything needs to be nice and smooth before we can start shaping or blowing the glass. Now, because I'm blowing it up, those colours are going to stretch. I'm not blowing it up too big, but I don't want the colour to be too washed out. So what I'm actually going to do is add another layer of colour over the top. You can see now, all those chunks melted in, I can get another layer on top. So down here on the floor, I have an optic mould. That's what it looks like inside. So it's a mold with lots of little ridges. Okay? Those ridges are gonna push this color into little lines. We'll add a bit more of a pattern. These are the only molds we use in Bristol Blue. Okay? It's purely just to create a bit more of a pattern. We don't have molds you blow into and cane presto, there's a wine glass. Okay? Everything we make is called free form. Okay? Free form glass making. The temperature of this reheat furnace is about 1200 degrees, okay, it's rather warm, and this is used to reheat the glass. If the glass goes cold, you can blow on it as much as you like, nothing's going to happen. The glass needs to be warm. Not only does it need to be hot so it's still moving, so we can work with it, but if it gets below 500 degrees, the piece of glass is actually going to start to crack. So everything we're making needs to be above 500 degrees. Our average working temperature, so what we normally have on the end of the iron or in our hands, is between 900 and 1100 degrees. So I'm going to dip this into the mould, so you can see it's sort of dotty at the moment. Once I've pushed it into the mould, so using the table known as a marva, I'm actually now able to shape up the glass a bit, but I'm also dragging it off. When I push it into the mould, it's forced the glass up onto the iron. I need all the glass off the end of the iron to actually use it the peak. So as I'm rolling, I'm pulling back ever so slightly. Back to the reheating furnace um, to get it nice and warm again, and then we'll move on. If I get this too hot, I'm not going to be able to control it. Okay? It's going to be going all over the place. So it's a fine line between getting things too hot and too cold. Which is why it takes seven years to learn, seven years of your basic training. So using a newspaper pad, it's going to really quickly make sure it's straight. And then using the jack, I'm just cutting in a tiny little knot on the end. The reason I'm doing this is because now I can pinch that little button of glass on the end. And as I pinch and turn, it's actually going to start to twist those lines and those colours. Now let's go on the end, we don't want that, so that's going to go in here. And at the end of the day, that can be reused. So now it's a nice even shape. I need to put a small bubble of air in there to get it started. Protect it from thumbing in. Slow down the iron, trap the air inside. The iron hot, the air expands, it's going to slowly push its way out 
That is now the pattern and the colour done. Whenever it's warm, it looks very, very different. The blues will actually start to look quite blue, but you can see my yellow does not look yellow at all. I would say that looks like a brownie orange. So that can be quite confusing as a glass maker, especially when you're designing things and colours. You start making the piece and you're looking at it and going, what have I done? It looks nothing like mine. It looks like you've got to know what your colours do and bear in mind they all change due to temperature. So all I'll do with this is now letting this cool down so I can dip it back into the furnace and get a much bigger layer of clear glass on top, okay? It's very difficult to gather a big lump or a big gather of glass in one go. So you build it up in layers. Now that already has gone very hard. If that isn't actually moved, if I stop turning, it's not gonna sink anymore, but I'm still keeping it turning. We've got heat coming from over there, we've got cold air coming from there, we have a fan here. If I stood here, we'd end up with different temperatures. Okay? When you blow into glass, the hot glass is going to stretch more. So if you have lumps of hot and cold bits, it won't blow up round. It will blow up like a monkey block. So if you have something in your hand, you should probably be twiddling it round. See now, I've got a big layer of clear glass over the top. Let's make a fish. So a little bit of water on the pad, if I don't want to set on fire. With this, I'm actually moving the glass around. I'm not just shaking it up, I'm pushing more of that clear glass towards the end. You can see I've got a little wedge there now. And that is where I'm going to stretch it more. So if I'm going to stretch it more, I need more glass there. Otherwise, it will stretch out too thick. When we blow into glass, we always do little puffs at a time. That means we can control the shape. So if you overblow it, it becomes thin, you can't just suck the air back out, okay? You do a little bit at a time. When you um, have been doing it a while, you've got a bit more confidence, you can obviously blow a bit more at uh, each time. So these jacks, which are these tools, the jacks of Brazilian or glass maker's fingers, I think they're feeling a little bit a little bit sticky, okay? They're not gliding as much as I'd like to on the glass. So, right down here, I have a little lump of beeswax. Because these tools have absorbed the heat from the glass, they're now very warm, so the max, uh, wax sorry, it melts on there, and now it's running much smoother over the surface of the glass. Beeswax, though, does set on fire. So every so often, the piece you're making, the tools are holding, first in flame, keep you on your toes, and it wakes you up. So this cut-in line that I'm making with the jack, so I'm cutting in, is really important. The piece has to come off the iron at some point, so you need a nice sharp line, a nice crisp line, so you get a nice even break. So the bigger the piece, the bigger the hole. If you can't fit your piece into the furnace to reheat it, there's no point making it, it's going to break. So this is known as a flash. A flash is when I'm all the way in the furnace. So this bit of glass here, that is not going to be part of the fish. That's going to be left on the iron. It's known as the moil. Okay? Now if that moil starts to crack, that crack can run down into the piece, or it might just break off. Okay? The whole piece will go on the floor. So a flash is all the way in, keeping all of the glass on the end of the iron, not just the piece. All the glass on the end of the iron, uh, nice hot temperature so it doesn't crack. Okay then, got a nice round shape now, which is lovely. But fish aren't perfectly round, are they? They tend to be a little bit longer than just a round ball. So we're going to stretch this out now. So, a long flash. That flash is keeping it warm, as I say. But then I only want to stretch the end. So, I'm coming back to the mouth of the furnace. So I'm only heating up the very end. The further in or out of the furnace you are, the different bits will get hotter. If you hold a liquid down on the floor, it obviously trickles off. So by getting this piece warm, hanging it down, it's actually going to start to make it slightly longer, okay? But it won't get as long and pointy as I want it to, so I'm going to use the tweezers. Find the middle. Okay. So 
That is now the body of the fish complete, okay? Now, it doesn't look much like a fish at the moment. These fish normally have eyes, they have fins, obviously. So we're going to add those bits now, okay? So this way, glass thing is a two-person job. I'm going to be sticking them all together and shaping it up. Ty's going to actually be bringing me over these bits of glass. Such a bit. Can you give me a bit? Please bring it over, okay? So before we do that, though, I'm going to flatten it. While I'm doing this, I need Ty to have his thumb or finger, doesn't really matter, over the end of the iron. That keeps the pressure inside. So when I flatten it, it doesn't just crumple, okay? It keeps the shape to get flatter. It's all about getting into a rhythm. And I'm not forcing it, I'm not like really going for it, okay? Everything we do in glass is incredibly delicate. Really light finger dexterity. Really delicate with the tools. The blowing is much easier than a balloon. You don't blow very hard. It is the opposite to a heavy-handed industrial job. So do that once more. You've got a bit of a fat head at the moment. There is now a hole in this pad. And yes, I did burn my hand. Those are a occupational hazard. You are going to burn yourself. You are going to cut yourself. It's character building. Now we're going to add the fin. So I'm going to start off uh, with Ty going to bring in what's known as a trail. It's not just a bit, it's a trail. The training um, goes all the way back, right back to the start of glass, all the way back to medieval Roman glass. They love doing training. It's also known as snake threading. Yeah. 
all these bits are all different temperatures, they're all moving in different rates. So try to keep it all nice and even, without all the bits sort of sticking back onto themselves, you know, it's quite tricky. Go away. 